So I'd love to introduce uh, Brandon uh, today from uh, Hedera. He's got some really, really interesting, juicy content about uh, developer relations and whether or not it's right for you. And he's got a pretty cool introduction as well. Uh, so I can't wait for him to basically talk a little bit about himself. I think you guys are going to find it really, really interesting. And for him to start, um, you know, his presentation. All I got to say is that, you know, as someone who has done a ton of presentations and seen a ton of presentations, this kind of content is pretty exciting to me. So hope you guys like that too. How we're going to do it is... Um, he will be going through um, the content of his slides and at every end of the end of every section we will be collecting some questions so just feel free to drop your questions in the chat and then we will maybe pick a couple to just sort of answer that before we move on to the next section all right brendan please take it away all right thanks ben for the excellent introduction all right okay so here's my introduction uh so i've been at hedera relatively recently i only joined earlier on this year by that, I was uh, doing DevRel for Rootstock, which is EVM on top of Bitcoin. Um, and I guess if you were in Singapore in 2019, you'd also know me from Dapps Dev Club, a tech meetup. Um, and also, fun fact, my very first job was literally scooping animal poop at the zoo. So yeah, that's me in a nutshell. And you've got my uh, Twitter and LinkedIn and my blog on the left-hand side as well, if you want to follow me on those things. Cool. Um, so. Here's what we'll cover in this presentation. If you've read the event description, you know I, I won't need to reiterate that. But uh, yeah, as Bern said earlier on, keep the questions coming in the chat, and she's going to select a few of them and pop them in. Uh, I'll answer them at the end of each section if there's if there's time. Cool. <clears throat> right. Let's begin. What is Devrel even? Right. What does it actually do? Um, there are a lot of things that it does, and I won't have enough time to go through all of them. Instead, what I'll do is I'll highlight a few different things that I think are the most important, right? All right, let's start with the developer journey, right? Essentially, this is a mental model where we visualize a single person going from hearing about your tech for the first time and then going through a series of stages and eventually getting through to the end, right? And at the end, this person has gone through from all the way through to the end and they will basically say, okay, this person has built a product with real users and real value using the tech, right? And when devs go from each of these stages through to the next one, um, there's a good chance that they'll be confused or stuck or frustrated <coughs> in the various places, right? So these things are friction points. And then also when they go through these stages, they will also interact with various things and like these, and those are touch points. So let's make this diagram a bit bigger. Right. So some of these touch points, they're internal, right? which means that you can you know, influence them directly in your DevRel team, and the others are external, so you can only indirectly influence it at best. Mm -hmm. And there's, there's no cheat sheet, right? which tells you what all of these touch points should be in your particular for your particular tech or your company, right? and neither is there a cheat sheet which tells you what are all the friction points um, are going to be. right? Um, within this, within this, uh, within this dev journey, right? So the DevRel team has to discover that, and a great way to do that is to do a form of UX research called DX research, where DX stands for Developer Experience. So back to the dev journey, right? So think of this as a series of funnels, right? Where one is connected to the next, and the job of DevRel here is to increase the conversion rate of each of these funnels. Right, so for example, how many percent of people who get through to discover will actually go to evaluate and then on to learn and each one has a different percentage and you're trying to maximize that. So for those of you who have prior experience in sales or marketing, you'll be thinking, now this is my jam, right? But for those of you who have uh, a developer background, right, these are gonna be new concepts for you. And you know, there's a section later on on career paths and we'll circle back to it later on. So. Um, let's see. Right, so the dev journey is actually just one of many different types of strategy that is employed by DevRel team. And here is a list of uh, different core components of DevRel. So usually you start with segmentation and then create personas based on the segments and then design a journey map, which you saw earlier on for each of those personas. And yeah, that extremely detailed diagram that we, that, you know, we saw in the previous slide 
So we're going to be creating multiple ones of them, one for each persona or what, one for each developer persona, right? And there are several other things as well, like hello world sequences, information architecture, product experience, etc. But we won't be able to get into all of that today, right? Um, right. So devs are a very, very t difficult target audience when it comes to marketing, right? So it's quite hard to find devs that allow ads or marketing emails to get in front of their eyeballs. Right, so their game in terms of blocking those is pretty strong. Some devs go as far as to create a personal VPN just to get rid of ads. So you're up against the very best in this uh, in this front. Right. That being said, dev marketing is not impossible, in my opinion. When marketing devs, you simply cannot use the easy options, which are the ones that marketing typically employs. Um, so by easy, I mean generic things like uh, email marketing campaigns or buying online ads. So instead, you have to skip these, I would say, low value adding tactics and, and activities from marketing and jump straight into high value um, items. So what you really have to do in a nutshell is um, first identify a pain point of the developer, then secondly, figure out how to use your tech to solve their problem. And then finally, describe how to do this in something like an article, a video, a code example, or something else, right? And if you do that instead of generic uh, marketing campaigns, right, that is what distinguishes, you know, dev marketing from marketing in general. Right. So, of course, when you provide value, you still have to get the word out about it. And for that, you still need to use the various traditional communications channels. So you don't forget your marketing one on one. Right. And that being said, when it comes to dev marketing, this actually turns out to be secondary. Right. The primary focus still needs to be that you demonstrate that your tech that you are that you are doing developer relations about right, can actually solve their problem. Right. And then you show them, you demonstrate that it does solve them or can solve the problem and then that's how you convince them that's that's basically how you get uh dev marketing across the line right all right so let's say that you've done your dev marketing right and you have acquired new developers right and these developers if you think if you put yourself uh in their shoes right they're going to take some of their time out of their day to figure out how to use your technology, right? And at this stage, the goal is dev education. So we're moving along the developer um, journey in terms of stages, right? So remember from your dev marketing, the dev is now thinking, okay, this tech that I've just tried or just heard about maybe can solve my problem. Emphasis on the maybe, right? Now the job of DevRel is to provide all the necessary resources for them to be able to do so. So the first three that you see on this list, LMS, articles, video, these are similar to you know, education on any other topic, right? But the latter three, API docs, code examples, Stack Overflow, and there are others, these are specific and tailored to dev education, and you employ a mix of these. All right, so apart from resources or content uh, that contains educational materials, there are also some activities that occur at uh, part of dev education, right? So this adds a more personal touch um, and they're also high effort, but they need to be, because they need to be done uh, synchronously, right? So whichever channels are interactive, right? The best thing to do is to use them as an opportunity to answer questions, right? Um, I, I happen to think that uh, Discord is pretty good and Stack Overflow is really good as well. Um, yeah, it's, so <laughs> explaining my meaning. Um, right, so now that you have uh, gotten your devs' interest in your tech and you've even taught them how to use your tech, what comes next, right? So at this point, the dev is almost at the end of their dev journey, right? And you want them to build something on top of your tech. So actually use it, right? Uh, not in a proof of concept way or a hello world kind of way, but a real app with real users and real value. Right. So, for example, if you're talking about a Web3 application, right, maybe something that has uh, that is on mainnet, right. Um, if you're talking about Web2 application, it means okay, I'm out of my staging environment and I'm in production, that sort of thing, right. So, yeah, when using new tech, right, uh, a dev will inevitably get stuck or get frustrated, and this is where dev success uh, comes into play, right, because they couldn't make something work properly or they took too much time to figure out how to make that thing work. And DevRel really wants to know about these friction points so that they can be eliminated uh, where it's possible. Or if it's not, then to provide workarounds, alternate solutions, etc. Right? By doing so, the interesting thing is that it has a positive feedback loop in both, uh, into both dev marketing and dev education. So if you 
do dev success well, then dev marketing becomes better, dev education also becomes better. Um, in order to do this, there are a couple of interesting concepts that I'd like to talk about. The first one is DX research. I mentioned this in passing earlier on. Right? So this is a specialized form of UX research where instead of general users, you're specifically looking at developers. Right? Here, DevRel will conduct interviews, focus groups, usability studies, etc. And the goal is to understand friction points and to do so without guesswork. Right? Instead, you actually extract insights from real developers using your tech. And this is crucial because when you're in DevRel, you are going to be so familiar with your own tech that you're going to be blinkered right? to the point that you'll be unable to see the problems, even the obvious ones, to others. Right? Um, the, second, the second one I want to talk about was the information valve. So there are like three levels to this. Okay? The first is a basic level where DevRel broadcasts information from the company out you know, to the community, the dev community. And if all the DevRel, if DevRel only does that, then it's not a very mature team. Right? And the next level up is to get feedback from your dev community. Right? And DX research is one way to do this, but there are several other techniques as well. If DevRel does both uh, broadcast and feedback, right, then that DevRel team is relatively mature. Right? And then, so that's level two. Right? The next level up from this is to make something called an information valve, and that's something that is bi-directional. And what you essentially want to do is not just from in to out and out to in, but rather connect those two things together and so it becomes like a, a feedback loop, right? And so this is all about designing an information flow and optimizing it or um, designing multiple information flows even. So if DevRel does this, then I would say it's more than mature. It's actually quite rare because um, many in the industry don't really get to this level, right? Um, in, in this scenario, DevRel essentially takes on the form of a proxy, right? So it's sandwiched, as you can see in this diagram, between product and engineering and the external developer community, right? And the role of, the, uh, of DevRel in the proxy is to facilitate this uh, information loop, right? By whenever some information comes this way or comes this way, it sits in the middle and it filters, it prioritizes, it amplifies, etc., right? So that's what DevRel does in this situation. All right, so I've said a number of times that we won't be able to get to this today, and there's a good reason for that. There's a vast body of professional knowledge about the field, right? And my intent was to pull out a few key bits uh, as tasters or teasers, and if this has piqued your interest, I would strongly recommend that you get this book that I've got on the screen. Uh, the title is Just Developer Relations, uh, very to the point and succinct. Um, and you will get heaps uh, more of what I just said, both in depth and breadth from this book, right? So link is on screen. Um, yeah. So uh, I'll also say that the same people who brought you that book that I just recommended, they also run a DevRel consultancy and I've collaborated with them on a couple of projects and they're really good, right? Um, and so one of the other things that they do is an annual survey and they call that the state of DevRel. It is quite comprehensive and um, if you were to think about it in, in analogy terms, right? The Stack Overflow annual survey is for devs as this state of DevRel is to, de to uh, develop relations, right? So I, I put it on par on that level, right? So on the slide here, I've got a link to the full report, right, for this year. So it's just stateofdeveloperrelations.com. Um, and then I've also got a tweet thread about it um, as well, where I extract, uh, I guess, what my insights were from this year's report. So go check that out. Um, I'll share the links with you later, or if someone wants to pull the links out in the slides and stick them in into the chat, that'd be great as well. Cool. All right, so now we'll be switching tracks, right? Um, DevRel is a function, and that function is executed by a team, and that team exists within a company, right? This next section will be about how the DevRel team fits into a company and peel back the curtain to reveal some of the behind scenes stuff, right? All right, before that, I'm gonna take a pause here and I'm going to check if there are any questions in the chat. Okay, so far we don't really have any questions, but I do have a question from a personal point of view, awesome. right? So, um, you know, I know the people uh, listening here today uh, also basically know that I'm the community manager. So something that I've always wanted to personally improve on a consistent basis, right, is what do you think are some of the best ways or the best standard practices, right, to actually communicate uh, and really bond with developers? 
Uh, okay, so I would I would always go back to uh, what I said earlier on um, with, with the different techniques. So so in dev marketing, right? Um, when you when you bond and communicate with developers, right? That is a form of dev marketing, and essentially, like what you want to do is you want to show that you that you can help to solve their problem, right? Um, and so that can take the form of well, explicit marketing, as I as I covered earlier on, but it can also take the form of support as well. Um, so, for example, right, if someone asks a question on your Discord or if someone asks a question on Stack Overflow and it's tagged uh, with your technology, then uh, DevRel should be on top of that, right, and provide and provide support for that. And if they don't, then you kind of lose that trust. And of course, if you lose trust, you don't, you know, you don't inspire a lot of confidence um, in in the technology. So you're kind of not fulfilling your your goal, right? Um, the other the other thing as well that I'll mention, which isn't like sort of covered in uh, in my section, which is to remember that you know we're you know we're human and we're kind of just basically really smart apes. Um, but that eight brain of ours still wants the human connection, like the in-person connection. So connecting with people in person always um, has a higher value uh, compared to like doing everything on websites or chat programs, etc. Yeah, so like in-person events or even something that's online, like a like a like a webinar where you you know whether you choose to uh, turn your uh, camera on versus your camera off you know that that sort of thing right makes makes a like a, an outsized difference yeah awesome thanks let's move on to the next section shall we this is very exciting guys awesome glad glad to hear all right so next section um Right, let's begin with an org chart, right? So this is something that I'm sure that many of you have seen before, right? In a typical tech company, the layout that you'll get is you'll have the executive team at top. So this is the C-level folks, um, VPs, etc. right? Then each function reports into them. So there's usually uh, engineering, product, marketing, sales that all report to the exec team. Um, there are going to be differences between one org and the next, but generally speaking, this is kind of the structure. There are also several other functions, but I've just you know left them out for brevity, right? So the question is, where does DevRel fit into this, right? Um, and it turns out that there is no one answer to this, right? So I put them in all the different spots with question marks, right? Um, so sometimes DevRel reports to engineering, sometimes to product, sometimes to marketing, sometimes to sales. And this is actually quite tricky because there's no like sort of consensus in the industry, right? Um, and it also means that that DevRel from one company to another tends to be quite different, right? Because engineering will put a more engineering influence onto DevRel, um, marketing will put a, a more marketing influence onto DevRel, so on and so forth, right? Um, each function knows their own field very well, but only has a cursory or perhaps even superficial idea of what the other functions do. And so when DevRel reports into one of these teams, then they are more, they tend to be more strongly aligned or focused with the team that they report into, right? And that's just natural, right? But really what, what DevRel is, is its own thing. Right, it has to be multidisciplinary. It actually does cover all of these different facets, all of these different functions within an organization. It does a little bit of all of that, right? And that's why you see this over here, right? So a lot of DevRel practitioners more recently have been advocating for their function to report directly to the executive team, right? Instead of being underneath yet another function. Um, but we don't see that very commonly uh, today, right? All right, the next thing is a source of confusion, right? Which is what exactly is the name of the team? What exactly is the job title of the people in the team, right? And these are all slightly different from each other, but you know, they're really hard to tell apart from the point of view of an external community member, right? And that's what really matters because you know, it's, a, it's kind of like a public facing role um, to, a, to a large extent. So in my past experience, right? I have been a dev advocate, a dev evangelist, Dev relations and even developer experience, right? So, 
you know, in what, what do you call it, like four or five years, I've done, had four different, you know, kind of titles, right? Kind of doing the same thing, more or less, but different titles, different team names, etc. right? So Hedera uh, concurrently has both a DevRel team and a Dev Advocacy team. So, you know, if I get mixed up, then, you know, what will an external community member think, right? So, you know, <laughs> so wherever I can get away with it, I just use DevRel and then an avocado emoji, you know, in more, uh, less formal settings, right? So hopefully that clears things up. <laughs> um, okay, moving on, right? So if you're in a tech company, uh, does that tech company make products primarily or platforms primarily, right? This is quite important to certain because it affects what kind of DevRel that you're going to be doing and what the constraints are present on the DevRel team, right? So a product is where uh, its users are end users, right? And a platform is where the users are actually developers who are building products for end users. So I make that distinction, right? On product versus platform. Um, and how does this affect DevRel? If a tech company focuses on building products, then there's only a maybe need for DevRel, right? Whereas if a tech company focuses on building a platform, then there is a definite need for DevRel. And this, uh, this latter situation, right, the platform situation, this is a much better environment for a DevRel uh, team to operate within. So that's something to consider um, when, let's say, you want to get to DevRel, which kind of company would you want to get into, right? All right, moving on. One of the biggest misconceptions about DevRel is that their main focus is on events, right? Um, speaking at meetups and conferences, organizing hackathons, etc. right? DevRel does do all of this, but it does a lot more than that, right? In fact, events only form a small fraction of what DevRel does, but events are the most visible and the most prominent. So that skews the uh, opinion significantly, right? So DevRel actually spends much more time doing things like creating tutorials, uh, running workshops, that sort of thing, compared to running events, right? But since all of this other stuff happens behind the scenes, that often gets overlooked. All right, this is one of my personal bugbears, right? Within a company, usually only the DevRel team truly understands its own function, right? Um, and I throw back to the org chart that I showed earlier on, right? The other teams usually have an incomplete understanding of the DevRel practice area, right? The roles, the responsibilities, the activities, the contributions, and the value that the DevRel team brings to the company, right? Or, or to the technology that's often only partially understood, right? By the other teams. And this also includes the executive team as well, right? So as far as internal challenges goes, this one is evergreen there is always an ongoing need to educate up, right? To other parts of the organization, to the executive team, to other teams that, you know, you are your stakeholders, etc. So some tips, right? Always look for an opportunity to educate up and take it when you can, right? One good, really good way to do this is to set up metrics for the DevRel team and be exemplary in how good your metrics game is. So even if the rest of the company doesn't do metrics, or they do metrics, but they don't do it um, very well, right? You gotta be on your A game, right? Um, because when you're educating up, you have more to prove by definition, right? And DevRel always has to be educating up until the function is better understood and by the circles, um, that is gonna be the case, right? For the foreseeable future, definitely. Another really good way to do this is to uh, maintain an achievements list or a brag list. Right. So every time the DevRel team makes a significant accomplishment uh, or something great happen, then log it in this uh, achievements list. And so, you know, whenever you have to, you know, you, can, you tend to forget over time, like over the year or over multiple years, you forget what your DevRel team has actually done, right? Any, anyone uh, would be similar to that. So if you keep a, maintain a list, it's like, oh, okay, you've got excellent memory of all the things you've achieved. And it's quite important to be able to be able to recall all that whenever, you know, whenever there's an opportunity, right? All right, so next up, we are going to move on to what DevRel does again, but this time it's going to be, unlike the first section, it's going to be boots on the ground edition. So what do you actually do um, day to day, right? Um, as an individual member of a DevRel team, right? But before we do that, I'm gonna take another pause and see if there's a question in the chat. Bern, do we have any? 
yeah, um, we've got a pretty good one, right? Uh, okay. Which is obviously, you know, how does one begin to, like, you know, become a DevRel? And, um, you know, is it something that a fresher, like a fresh graduate can, uh, you know, do? Or is it something that they should wait for, like, after they have a little bit of experience? Uh, okay, I think this question is jumping ahead a little bit because there is a section at the, uh, two sections at the end, actually, about, you know, career path considerations, right? So... I'm going to come back to that question after I've done that section. Yeah? Okay, so okay, then the yeah. other question yeah. we have, right, uh, is that for small companies, right, is DevRel something that they should be focusing on and, you know, can they be from the exec side? Okay, so small companies should or should not have DevRel and the second part was, um, should it be from the executive side? What does that mean? Was the second part like know? can they be from like the executive side uh keval maybe you want to explain a little bit about what that means as well right can devra oh okay so my interpretation i'm reading the text now um of that question uh, my interpretation of that is maybe uh is like are you saying that can there be a chief DevRel officer uh, or like a VP of DevRel? And the answer to that is is absolutely, right? I think, in fact, that is a better option because then um, going back to the org chart that I had earlier on, right? Um, let me see that. Let me see organization structure. There we go, right? So coming coming back to this, this slide over here, um, right? So then essentially you've got the situation going on. And that is that is good actually. I think that would be an improvement if more if more companies put DevRel reporting directly into the executive team, right? And uh, that typically would only happen if there's a VP of DevRel or a chief DevRel officer within the within the executive team. Yeah. So yeah, that, that's that's how I'd answer that second question. Uh, in terms of the first question, um, can startups uh, I guess the question is can startups afford to do DevRel? Um, I would say, I would say uh, to some extent, right, uh, you can think about it from a budget point of view. And yes, of course, startups are constrained and they have to be really picky about which functions that they choose. Um, but I hope that, you know, uh, if you truly understand the value that DevRel brings, then, uh, then you would go for it you know, uh, off the bat, right? Because if you're building a, a, like a piece of technology and your target audience is developers, then you do have to go through all of those stages in the DevRel journey, right? And if you don't have someone who's a professional who knows how to, under, who understands that and goes through the stages mechanically, um, understands how to do it properly, et cetera, et cetera, right? Then you may be losing a lot of your customers, right? And so, you know, it's like a, it's like a, a business, right? It has to have both revenue at maximization as well as cost minimization. So you don't want to minimize your cost at the expense of um, not maximizing your profits, you know? So it's, it's a balancing act, especially if you're budget strapped. So that's a decision. It's, it's a nuanced uh, decision that you have to make. Um, I would say that um, maybe one easier thing to easy way to think about it is another thing that I talked about as well, which is product versus platform. So if your your users are end users directly, then maybe you don't need DevRel when you're at the startup stage, right? Um, but if you are a startup and your end users are developers immediately, right, from the get go, they're developers, then you're a platform. And by definition, you will need DevRel, right? So then it comes to that question about, you know, maximizing profits, I guess, uh, by increasing your revenue versus decreasing your costs. Hope that answers your question. And yes, um, I'd like to see more chief DevRels and VPs of DevRels. Um, okay, great. So let's continue, um, unless there were any other questions. Okay, cool, let's, uh, let's continue, right? So. Uh, where were we? Right, so the role, DevRel, boots on the ground. Okay, so what are the main takeaways about DevRel uh, is that the role is very multifaceted, right? And you will be pulled in a number of different directions at the same time on a daily basis. When you first start a DevRel role, you will almost certainly fall into a classic beginner's trap of spending all of your time on support. Um, 
Now, you have to avoid this by being able to identify when this happens and then plan your time allocation such that you split your time intentionally between three categories of support, operations, and strategy. Right. Um, so what you want to do is determine upfront what percentage of time you want to spend in each of these areas and stick to that dogmatically. Right. Um, maybe between those three that I just mentioned, you want to be 20% support, 60% operations, 20% strategy, or some other mix that you decide. Right. Um, and whatever it is, don't deviate from that too much. And if you find yourself deviating too much, then you've got to sort of have a think about what you need to stop doing and what you need to start doing. All right. Another impact of DevRel being such a multifaceted role, right, is that time management becomes very crucial. Um, and, and this is more so than in other uh, functions in a tech company, right? So prepare for your planned tasks and priorities to get disrupted weekly, sometimes even daily. Um, at a company level, you might be asked to use Scrum or sprint planning or something similar. That works really well for software engineering because you can plan ahead of time. And sometimes you can do that even months in advance. But DevRel does not work in that way. I wish it did, but in reality, it's much more chaotic and you have to be reactive. Um, there is a method to the madness if you can find it. And I have a couple of techniques that can help, right? So the first one is that when Scrum and sprint planning starts to fall apart because you know, it's just become too much of reactive rather than proactive um, uh, things that you have to do. So you just say, okay, I've identified a situation and then swap to Kanban temporarily as it allows the team to be more reactive. And then regardless of what methodology you're using at a team level or at a company level, another thing that I always do is I just create a markdown checklist of things that I need to do. So no matter what uh, the chaos is, you know, outside of your sphere of influence, within your own sphere of influence, you all you have to deal with is a checklist, right? And then sometimes that is like a very simple hack, but also very powerful. Um, and I think that that's one of my, like that's a secret source for my own personal productivity. All right, so second technique, right? Um, so you can keep track of what tasks that you're doing, right? Um, through me various methodologies, right? And you can also reprioritize them using various methodologies. But the problems start to creep in when you make poor decisions about those new priorities, right? Um, or those reprioritizations, right? It is tricky because you can't go for what's the most important first, right? And neither can you go for what's the most urgent first, right? Um, and to help with that specific situation, right? There's a simple chart called the Eisenhower matrix, which I've got here on the screen. Um, just employ this every time you need to prioritize a set of tasks um, and then you tend to get the best outcomes. At least that's my, uh, been my observation. All right, another impact of DevRel being such a multifaceted role is that you have a lot of stakeholders and I am sensing a pattern here. I've used the word or the phrase multifaceted uh, quite a number of times, right? So the, the work de uh, that DevRel does likely has indirect impacts on all of, on, on many different functions, engineering, product, marketing, sometimes even sales and legal. So DevRel has so many diverse stakeholders and stakeholder management is paramount, right? You might know what you need to accomplish, but how you do those things is unknown. And this is where strategy comes into play, right? Um, DevRel needs to be good at roping in stakeholders from different functional areas within the company to get them all on the same page. I think my uh, favorite tool for this is the RACI matrix, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, R-A-C-I, um, which helps you to map out stakeholders um, very definitively and um, somewhat more importantly also discover your blind spots. Right? You may also want to use checklists and flowcharts to aid communication to the stakeholders once you've established your RACI matrix. Um, etc. Right. So there are a number of things you can do um, in terms of stakeholder management. And some of you might be thinking, listening to this, right, uh, this doesn't sound very much like DevRel. Um, it sounds more like a management thing. Someone with MBAs would be, you know, doing Eisenhower matrices and, and, and RACI matrices and all the sorts of other stuff, right, flowcharts, etc. Right. And yes, you are right, generally speaking. But in DevRel, even if you're an individual contributor and not a manager, right, you do need to know and to use this stuff. Right, so that was a quick section, um, and we have covered DevRel from multiple different angles, the function, the politics, and the role, right? So in this, uh, this upcoming section and the next one, right, we'll switch tracks and it'll become more personal, right? Specifically, we'll cover career paths, right? Um, throw back to that question from earlier in this section, and then also the next section will be how to figure out if DevRel is for you. 
right? Um, determining it on a personal basis, right? Whether to get into it and how to do so. All right, so I'm going to take another pause here and uh, check for questions in the chat. Do we have um, questions? I see one about community manager becoming DevRel. I will actually, that, that will actually be upcoming. So I'll take a different question. Yeah, all the questions are kind of like a career related at this point. Right. So maybe we just do this section and see what comes okay. up. Okay, so I'll take more questions in the career section. Great. All right. So I'm going to go back to the same org chart uh, from earlier, right? But this time it's a different angle and it's the angle that you've been asking about, right? So each of the various functional areas that DevRel potentially reports into, for example, marketing, right? Um, is not just uh, an area that DevRel can report into, but is also a source of someone uh, wanting to uh, switch into DevRel, right? Um, so that actually already answers uh, your question, uh, one of the questions, right? So can a community manager become a DevRel, right? So a community manager typically would start off in a marketing team, and yes, they can become DevRel, right? Because you know these functions, engineering, product, marketing, and sales, they have the most to do with DevRel. Um, if you take a look, I'll, I'll reference the, um, hang on, I'll just pull this slide up very quickly. Um, this one over here, this DevRel report. Um, I would say check out this report and it does go into some detail as to um, what is the background of uh, how many percent come from this background and that background? How many percent of DevRel teams report into this function or that function, etc. Right? So, yeah. Cool. So, let's see. Where are we? Um, all right. Let's get back here. Right? So, okay. So, let's say you're from any of these functions and you want to transition into DevRel. Right? What, what tends to happen is that, say you're from marketing, you need to... Uh, you need to learn some product and some engineering. If you're from engineering, you need to learn some products and marketing and sales, you know, that sort of thing, right? Um, so these, these are the other functional areas where DevRel kind of crosses um, in a multidisciplinary fashion, right? So yeah, basically if you come from one specific area, then generally speaking, you need to learn the other areas. And I'll go into like some uh, specific examples in this one. Uh, in the next couple of slides. Oh, by the way, I had too much fun making this meme. <laughs> um, this, this was the highlight of me making this presentation, by the way. Um, yeah, um, all right, getting back to it. So if you come from a software engineering background and you transition into DevRel, this is probably the most commonly taken path, right? And there are pros and cons, right? If you're creating code examples and other materials for developers, Right, which is what a, a lot of DevRel is about, then this is going to be quite easy for you because you already know how to code, right? And also, um, the target audience basically is you, right? And you know yourself well, or hopefully, right? For example, right, when you know, uh, sorry, when you need to put yourself in the shoes of the target segment or the persona that you're creating a developer uh, journey for, for example, right? you can do so much more easily because all you have to do is you can think about your own experiences in the past, right? Because you were a developer in the past, right? So you can design your own developer journey uh, or a developer journey for another developer, right? What are the negatives? It is quite likely that you'll go from writing code at a much more advanced level to code that is much easier, much simpler, right? So naturally, your ability in that particular skill will get weaker over time unless you continue to code outside of work, right? All right, the other sort of negative is that you will likely have to get good at a skill that you have not practiced much before, which is not really a negative, but it's just like a negative at the beginning, right? So things like uh, marketing, being in events, etc. that sort of thing you have to pick up along the way and it'll be hard at the beginning. All right, now coming from a marketing background, right, and transitioning to DevRel, this is probably the second most common path, right? And in this, I'm including those with backgrounds in running events and community management, that sort of thing, right? Um, various sub areas within marketing. So the pro of this, right, is that you already have those marketing skills that you will need to practice in DevRel, right? But the negatives are kind of the inverse of the earlier one, the, early, the previous slide, right? Which is that you need to put in a lot more work to learn how to code and to understand the target audience of developers, right? So this isn't something that's gonna come naturally to you. You're gonna to have to put in the work to level up on this, 
on this front. Much, uh, much in the same way that a developer needs to learn how to uh, p- needs to pick up skills at running events, public speaking, that sort of thing. Right. All right. Another phrase that I like to use a lot in describing DevRel, and this kind of encompasses this in a more meta or more abstract way, right, is that you need to be a jack of all trades. Right. So this is not just a- applicable to the skills and activities that you do. In DevRel, but it's also uh, to do with the ability to deal with different parts of the organization, which are internal stakeholders, and also dealing with a community as well, external stakeholders. So this is quite the juggling act. Now that phrase jack of all trades also comes with the second part, right? Master of none. And this is where the hard work comes in. Let's say that you are a software engineer, you'll have a lot of depth and skills and ability in writing software, right? Um, and this is modeled by the blue strip, essentially depth. Right? Let's say that you then transition into DevRel and you'll have a lot of breadth in your skills and abilities spanning, writing software, marketing, product management, even sales. Right? That's modeled by the yellow strip, breadth. But what you really want in an ideal situation is to maintain depth in one area while expanding your breadth to cover all of the other areas. And that's the green strips here, right? breadth and depth. That is much easier said than done and something to consider about DevRel as a career path. Okay, so now that we've covered um, career paths, right, hopefully that has piqued your interest. And I know that even before we covered it, I saw some people with, based on your questions, I can tell that you already were interested. So you came in um, as a hot lead or a qualified lead in marketing speak, right? Um, yeah, so some of your interests have been piqued. Uh, during this uh, talk, hopefully, and some came in already with that, right? So. Um, and I can also pick up another thing from your questions as well, which is that you have come from a number of different backgrounds, right? Some of you are probably software engineers, some of you come from marketing team and others, right? And um, some paths, you know, they're harder and they take longer than others and some paths are easier, right? And maybe you even came into this talk thinking that, oh, okay, I don't have the right background. Right, I I'm in marketing. I didn't ha- I didn't think that I could be DevRel. But then now you think, oh, okay, maybe maybe I can do it after all, right? Or maybe you were a software engineer. It's like, oh, I don't want to do. Well, I have never done public speaking before, so maybe DevRel is not for me. But you know, maybe now you think that, hey, that's possible, right? Um, so yeah, a bunch of things to con- uh, consider, right? Okay, so let's get back to this, right? So right now you're doing something else altogether professionally, and how do you go from inspiration? Right. Oh, okay. I've decided I wanted to do DevRel to something concrete and actually transition to DevRel in uh, as a career. Right. And this section is where we're going to cover just that. Right. Um, so, uh, just by way of preamble, right. Um, you got to be. You got to make sure that you're not just inspired, but that you're also actually capable of a role in DevRel. So you've got to test your own abilities, and secondly, you've got to be seen. Uh, by some company who is looking for DevRel talent as someone who is going to fit into their DevRel team. So that's the other thing, right? And this section is going to cover a couple of techniques, a few techniques, I should say, that will help you to cover both of these, um, both of these areas. So I'm going to pause there and take some questions. So I know there were some questions um, that probably have already been answered d- during the previous section. Um, are there any new questions? Nope, so far none. Okay, I see a, I see a question. Oh, I see something about Python. Been, uh, that's you, isn't it, Bert? Yeah. Okay. So Python is an excellent language to learn as a first language. It's uh, it's probably the the least confusing syntax, right? Um, and I would say it's not very uh, usable in the Web three space. Um, JavaScript tends to dominate here as well as Solidity um, because of smart contracts and EVM. Uh, and also, you know, a lot of the, the tooling that currently exists. So JavaScript is the way, the main language you want to be learning um, if you want to be Web3 DevRel specifically. Um, and Python, right, on the, uh, on the other hand, is, is an excellent choice if you want to get into uh, data science, machine learning, um, that sort of thing. Um, yeah, it's because... Cause same thing can be said in reverse. And so if you want to get to DevRel within uh, data science or machine learning uh, areas, then you know, Python's an excellent choice to start with, right? If you're, if you're beginning that journey. 
Oh, and I see someone's uh, oh burned as URL. Excellent. All right. So if you want to learn how to uh, write more smart contracts in Solidity, um, well, I can I I can uh, I can arrange that. Right. That's part of my role in DevRel. Right. I, I want I want more people to write smart contracts and Solidity and deploy them on Hedera. Right. That's uh, <laughs> that's that's uh, definitely part of my role. Okay. So. Um, is it the best of both worlds, developer and management? Um, I wouldn't say that uh, DevRel necessarily includes management, right? You do have to be aware of a lot of management-like uh, techniques, like you know the RACI matrix, etc., that I covered earlier on, as well as stakeholder management. So you need to be aware of it and employ it, but you wouldn't employ it as a manager, right? So I'll, I'll give you a bit of a nuanced take on that. But the other sentiment in your question is like the best of both worlds, yes, right? In the sense that if you enjoy um, coding and you enjoy uh, speaking, you know, like, you know, kind of like both sides of that, that, that spectrum, or you enjoy, you know, doing marketing on social media and you also enjoy creating applications and making them work, right? So if you get, if you have that, like, um, that, that mix in you, then it will definitely feel like the best of both worlds, right? Uh, yeah, so um, I will tell you a personal story. So I, I came from a software engineering background. I was doing, I was a software engineer for, I think, I can't count, but maybe around 11 years before I transitioned into DevRel. And, uh, and, and at first, right, I stuck only to like the coding parts of DevRel and minimize, you know, I would say the more marketing uh, or more product side of things um, within DevRel. But then I slowly sort of um, expanded my worldview almost and got used to it as I went along. So yeah, that's another thing to consider in terms of career paths. Okay, uh, I better continue um, just so that we're not over time. All right, so, um, Right, so, so how do you determine if uh, DevRel is the right uh, career path for you, right? So the main recommendation for me about this, to answer that question, is that you need to give it a go before you commit to a career transition. Um, there are many challenges in this role, and I've enumerated quite a lot of them um, leading up to this in this presentation, right? And it is important that you experience at least some of them firsthand before you make that that transition right in a career path change right and i'm going to list a few techniques that i'd strongly encourage you to do on this front right the payoff um the payoff right for doing all of this is that you could find that perfect role in devrel uh, that balances a lot of different skills that you that you that you just realize that you have or that you didn't realize that you have until now um, i should say all right, so let's start with the most common task and perhaps the type of task that you spend the most time on, right? So create a code example, right? So, so actually do this, right? So create a code example, create a written tutorial based on your code example, and then record a demo video based on your tutorial, right? So once you've done that, then publish all of these on GitHub, on website, on YouTube, that kind of thing, right? So publish everything that you've done then post about it on Twitter or some of the social media, right? The obvious rationale for doing all of this is, you know, the work that you have to do to, to, to accomplish this, right? And then you can assess your own ability to do these tasks, right? So that's the obvious rationale. But there's also a less obvious rationale, right? Which is to ask yourself a few questions, right? Did you enjoy the process of doing this? Did you feel like it was a chore on the other hand, right? When you hit publish and then promoted it on social media, did that feel like the natural course of action? Or did you feel like maybe you should have just kept it to yourself, right? So a few questions to ask yourself um, to sort of retrospect or introspect um, upon doing these uh, tasks, right? Now, the other thing is to speak, right? So the most externally visible part of DevRel is when you speak at tech meetups or tech conferences, right? Now, the cool part is that you don't actually need to be DevRel to do that, right? Um, anyone can speak at events as long as the topic is relevant to that particular event. So. Here's, uh, here's my ask of you, right? Um, if you are choosing um, 
develops a career path, right? So some homework for you to do. Pick any piece of tech that you're excited about. Maybe it's a programming language, maybe it's a dev tool, a library framework, whatever it is, right? Create a presentation about it, one that includes a live demo, preferably, or I should say, uh, in this case, definitely includes a live demo, and then submit it to the organizer of a tech meetup. And hopefully you get picked to speak, right? If you're in, then turn up and deliver your preso and your demo. Right? And if you come from an engineering background, then the public speaking part is likely going to be the most challenging part for you. Otherwise, if you come from another background, then the demo part of it, the technical demo, is going to be the most challenging part of it. Right? Um, e even for seasoned DevRel professionals, the, the tech demo is usually the hardest part of it as well. Right? So, <laughs> um, yeah, I've been, I've been burnt many times by live demos crashing. Um, it, it, is a, it is a thing. It's more than a meme. Right. So um, the obvious rationale, again, is the work that's being done and, of course, assess your own ability in doing these tasks. But then also the same sort of hidden rationale, right? You ask yourself, did you enjoy the process of, of doing this, right? Of speaking and doing a, a tech demo? Or did you feel like it was a chore, right? When you got on stage and you spoke to an audience, did that feel okay, right? Or did you feel like maybe you should have just posted it online instead? You know, a few questions to ask yourself. Right. Um, another externally visible part of hackathons, right, and therefore also an easy part to insert yourself into in a try it before you buy it manner, is hackathons, right? So if you're on a DevRel team, you're likely going to be attending hackathons, judging them, mentoring them, and even sponsoring and organizing hackathons, right? So you'll be involved in a lot of different facets with, uh, with regards to hackathons, right? Um, and I think uh, Burn and the rest of the Angel Hack team, you know this firsthand, right? Because that's part of your core mission. And, you know, uh, full disclosure, Hedera has collaborated with Angel Hack multiple times on various uh, hackathons and, uh, and other things, right? So, so yeah, like, th this is a thing that DevRel uh, works on and spends a lot of time doing, right? And it's quite externally visible, so it's easy for you to, you know, try it before you buy it as well, right? So, I suggest that you do this, but do more than uh, what a typical hackathon attendee would do, right? So you take it to the next level, right? So you don't just um, submit and 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 uh, a project and then do the pitch, etc., right? So you do more than that, right? You take it to the next level. So you take a look at the bounty, right? And you see how they've been structured by the event organizer and by the sponsors. So you're sort of like doing an analysis of how what it's like to be an organizer almost right and then there's also certainly going to be devrel professionals at the hackathon um you know because they're so deeply involved in it right so go talk to them and ask them what it is like to be doing devrel like doing what they do day to day right and maybe tell them that you're interested in devrel yourself and see what advice they give you right and then once again I come back to the similar set of questions as i as i've said in the uh, previous slides, right? So ask yourself these questions, right? Uh, did you enjoy the process of doing this, right? Or did you feel like it was a chore being a part of a hackathon, right? And those additional bonus things um, that you do beyond submission, right? When you speak to other DevRel professionals, right? Did you vibe with them, right? Did you feel like you connected with them? And do you feel like you could work in a team with one of them, right? So again, more questions to ask yourself, right? All right, so I've covered like three different things that are basically accessible to anyone, right? You can, you can do them wherever you are, whichever company you work for, there's, there's no like sort of gatekeeper. This last task, right, is only really accessible um, if you happen to already work in a tech company um, and that company also happens to have a DevRel team, right? So this is kind of, um, you know, more niche in terms of accessibility. Right, so the task here is going to be described in much less detail because it is, you know, it, you have to sort of figure out more things on your own. So it's going to be a bit more vague, right? And you have to tailor make it uh, your approach based on the specific circumstances in the company that you happen to be in. But here's the basic idea, right? You ask your manager to temporarily expand the scope of your role and, uh, and your responsibilities, right? And you specifically said, I want you specifically say that you want to include some activities that are performed by your DevRel team, right? And if you're able to convince that and navigate that successfully, you'll be able to continue on in your current role and have a temporary additional workload where you get to try out uh, DevRel as well, right? So essentially you're double hatting, right? 
And so when you do this, you're assessing, right? If it is for you, whether DevRel is for you firsthand, and you also have the opportunity to learn how to do DevRel on the job, right? So it's kind of like an apprenticeship and kind of, yeah, you have to carve this opportunity out for yourself, right? Once again, ask yourself these questions, right? Did you enjoy the process of doing this or did you feel like it was a chore? Um, when you execute a DevRel task within your company, did you feel like you accomplished something? Did you feel like you could work within your company's DevRel team? So have a think about that, right? And, you know, kudos to you for doing this if you actually pull it off because, you know, this one takes, uh, yeah, it, it, it takes some skill to navigate an organization and uh, to, to secure this kind of thing for yourself. So if you, if you actually do this, right, um, hit me up. I, I personally want to know what your process was um, in, in doing so. Um, reach out to me through Benedict um, or, you know, find me on Twitter, whatever you prefer, right? Cool. All right, we've just come to the end of this presentation and I'm going to wrap up very shortly and it looks like I'm just on time. Um, but first I'll take a pause to see if there are any final questions before we wrap up. Yeah, we've got a pretty good one, which is uh, how do we stand out when we are interviewing for DevRel roles? Okay, so uh, that's, a, that's a really good question. Um, I think uh, non-specific to DevRel, right? Like tech companies in general, they kind of, well, in my experience, um, they don't really care about what degree or diploma or whatever you have, what your educational qualifications are. They really only care about your past work experience, right? So this can be a good thing and a bad thing. Like, so if you didn't have a formal education, this is generally a good thing um, for you. But it also makes it extremely hard to start um, in, in a new role, right? Um, and this is compounded by the fact that if you want to do a mid-career transition, so let's say you are like straight out of school and you want to start in DevRel, right? That is difficult enough, right? Now, if let's say you've been working for a few years in another function, let's say you've been doing marketing for five years, right? And now you say, okay, I've learned how to code and I want to do DevRel now, right? Um, and, then you, and then you're keen on doing that transition. Um, DevRel uh, may your hire, the potential hiring manager be like oh but I'm sure you've got marketing experience but you don't have any DevRel experience so that detracts from you as a candidate as opposed to someone who's been doing DevRel already and has actual prior experience right so doing a mid-career transition into DevRel which is something that I've done right can also be much harder to do in that front right and so um, how, how do you do this right um, I, I would I would say uh, you basically it's, it's it's kind of the same as any other like mid career transition or any other person doing their first job without you know prior work experience um, and the general advice there is to build a portfolio right and you notice that you know this this wasn't really planned <laughs> but basically if you do this right you. You, you start writing, creating tutorials um, in, with code examples and videos, etc. right? And you, and you post a bunch of them. You can say, aha, that's my portfolio. I can do DevRel, right? Um, if you do this, if you say, hey, I've spoken at these meetups and at these tech conferences and here are the topics I spoke about. Here's the, you know, the recorded video, go check it out. That's also part of your portfolio. You can say, you can legitimately claim that I have done DevRel, I know how to do it, right? Um, if you have participated in a hackathon and you've won some prizes, that'd be great. If you network with DevRel people, like, like uh, as I've suggested here, and you, you've shared stuff with them, then you know, you've got a leg up, you know someone in the company, and you know, that's a potential, uh, you know, like if, if, they, if they vibe with you and they, they feel like you've got what it takes, despite a lack of like, uh, professional experience, then they might take a, a better chance on you. So all of these things, right, um, they're not just tried before you buy, but they're also, um, they're also adding to your portfolio. So, you know, th there's, a, there, there's one like set of hacks that is, uh, I guess, applicable in, in multiple ways. Cool. Um, was there any other questions? Me is DevRel or DevRel is me? Oh, I like that question. I think you should tweet it. <laughs> yeah. Um. Well, I think that's pretty much the uh, questions we've had. I think the presentation was just so informative, genuinely speaking, and I think I've learned a lot myself. 
and I gotta say thank you. I feel very seen for the work that I'm doing as well. You know, uh, I did also happen to. Um, I mean, I wasn't you know in this space, so I also actually had a, a transitional sort of period. So we can have that conversation if you'd like. But I just really want to thank you so much for having such an engaging presentation, and I think everybody Welcome. just really appreciates this. It's just been. Um, it's not just been like educational, but I think like you've given us so much unique insight that no one else would probably say. I mean, like, you know, the politics of what's going on, you know, how DevRel's report to different teams. It's so realistic and we really appreciate your time. So can we just have a round of applause and uh, emojis for uh, Brendan, please? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, I, I was going to touch it. We, we discussed that previously, like before the, the, the call started. Um, we were discussing about the, the politics thing. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to touch on that. The, my motivation behind including that is that when, say, you read blog posts or, you know, you, you read, um, uh, you know, uh, like, um, see, like read a book about DevRel, like it gives you a lot of the theory. And I guess like the very first section of my presentation, that's what I focused on. But then the rest of the presentation, I wanted to take a different like uh, uh, thing, like what is it really like? you know, inside and, and, and doing this role. And if you're not in this role, then how do you get into it? So that was the theme of the, the rest of the presentation. And, uh, and that was my specific intent in, you know, making a different, like uh, a more useful presentation, I will then rather than repeating what's already out there. Cool. Um, all right, I'll, I'll wrap up um, with just a couple more slides. So um, this is what we've covered. Right. So the first part was about DevRel in general, and the second part was a bit more specific, aimed at potential or aspiring DevRel professionals. And I see there's a lot of you um, who are in that category based, uh, based on the comments in the chat. Um, and I want to I, I just want to stress something. Right. So what I've covered here is very, very little. Right. There's a lot more. I've said this before that I could talk about. And you know what's what's here on the screen is a bunch of other stuff that I could have talked about instead. Right. And I just didn't have time to cover. So where can you find out more? Right. Um, again, I recommend the DevRel book um, that I talked about earlier on. I've also got a blog post um, on my personal blog. I wrote this a uh, year and a half ago, I think, um, on developer advocacy. Um, if you liked this presentation, if you found this interesting, I think you might enjoy that as well. Um, also, you can connect with me on LinkedIn, uh, Twitter, etc. Right. So feel free to contact me there. Um, if you add me on LinkedIn, just a side note, mention that you were in this call because I get too many, you know, requests um, that are spammy. So, uh, so, so yeah, just just say that I was in this uh, Hedera, uh, Hedera Angel Hack, uh, what's it called, Dev Dev Hangouts. So yeah, um, cool. All right, and that's it. That's a wrap. Thank you very much for uh, for everyone who stayed on. Thanks, Brendan. It was absolutely fantastic. I think everybody can agree. Uh, and I will definitely push everybody to your Twitter. Um, you all should follow him on Twitter, please. Okay. And uh, repost all his stuff. Uh, and <laughs> we really look forward to maybe having you speak again one more time in the future about, you know, other things as well. Yeah, yeah. Sounds good. Um, maybe the next time we'll talk about, uh, you know, instead of talking about DevRel, I'll be DevRel in action and, you know, advocating for the technology that I represent. <laughs> yes, the code along would be fantastic. I think people would love a code along. Yeah, awesome. All right, awesome. Thanks, everybody. All right, ciao.